CTV News at 5 with Hudson Mack. Good evening. For the second time this week, high winds have hit Vancouver Island and hit hard, doing more damage even as the cleanup continues from the storm two days ago. Once again, mid and North Island regions have seen the worst of it. BC Hydro estimates that there are close to 4,000 households without power, not as bad as we saw Monday. Some of those people did lose their electricity in the earlier storm, and what happened to them today is going to keep them in the dark even longer. Once again, though, the South Island has missed the worst of it, but not all of it. Storm force winds toppled trees and sent branches flying across the road near Mount Douglas Park in Saanich this afternoon. Mount Douglas Parkway was shut down as municipal crews cleaned up the mess. The road is expected to reopen later tonight, but the high winds didn't stop there. Wicked winds sent waves crashing on to Ogden Point. The Coho Ferry could be seen fighting the giant waves as it made its way across the strait to Vancouver Island. On Cook Street, meantime, winds of nearly 70 kilometers an hour knocked down a massive tree outside an apartment building and took down power lines as it fell. Tree branch broke off, took out a line. So we just want to remind people just to stay away from uh, line downs and uh, you know call emergency services and we'll come check it out. The strong winds also knocked out power at Victoria International Airport this morning. The airport says a backup generator restored the power, and despite the disruption, no flights were suspended. Far worse to the north, though. Campbell River is still a scene of destruction where vehicles crushed by the massive trees that were toppled in the hurricane force winds Monday line the streets. Just south of Campbell River, hydro crews spent the day cleaning up at Miracle Beach Park. They're trying to clear a path for vehicles that haven't been able to get through since the storm hit. We're uh, kind of looks like uh, Stanley Park did in uh, 80 or what 06. was it, 06 there, but we're still chipping away, just kind of a span at a time, span at a time, so lots down. The wind gusts on Monday, 137 kilometers an hour, were the highest ever recorded by the weather station at Gamble River. And today the wind was still blowing hard at 111 kilometers. BC Hydro says it hopes to have Miracle Beach Park clear by tonight. Several homeowners in the area need to drive through the park in order to get to their homes. In the aftermath of the storm, a Vancouver Island truck driver says he's just happy to be alive. He was driving his big rig on the island highway on Monday. He stopped to avoid a broken tree on the road, and as he was waiting for it to be removed, he was nearly crushed himself. The driver had just passed Wass and was waiting for a crew to clear a fallen alder. When he heard a crack, one by one, several large pine trees came crashing down onto a semi, covering almost the entire vehicle, trapping the driver inside. I was in my truck and I feel this whomp, something would come across and hit my trailer. So I look and I look over and look in my mirror and see what it was and I look back just in time to see another one come down just above my hood and hang there. As it turns out, there's an embankment between me and where the trees broke. So they actually cushioned some of the fall and that saved some of my truck. But after that one came down over the hood, that's when I decided I'm out of there. So I got out of the truck and I was about 30 feet away. I stopped and turned around just in time to see the rest of them come down. And really good truck, so I'm glad. Jeff Mee says the entire cab was covered with trees, but fortunately there was enough room for him to escape. Damage to the semi uh, turned out to be relatively minor. Traffic at Wasp was stopped on the highway for about two hours as crews worked to clear the fallen trees. Customers hoping to catch a ferry this morning out of Horseshoe or Departure Bays were out of luck again because of the wind. Another day of blustery conditions on the water meant that BC Ferries had to cancel its 10.30 and 12.30 sailings out of both terminals. Hydro customers got the news just before the 10.30 sailing. By 3 this afternoon, things had cooled off a bit and settled down, and BC Ferries was back on schedule. The two sailings were the only cancellations today at all of BC Ferries' major terminals. Well, they will be leaving their clothes on at a downtown Victoria strip club for the next three weeks. In fact, the doors will be closed. It's been shut down after an extensive undercover police investigation. The sign says it all. The license at Monty's Exotic Showroom Pub has been suspended. The bar has been smacked with hefty fines after several liquor violations and incidents of cocaine trafficking. Monty's has been ordered to close its doors for 22 days after police say it was a hub for illegal activity. An underground operation called Foul Play began last June. In it, Victoria Police had officers from the mainland and military police posing as patrons at the strip bar. And they witnessed many offenses firsthand. Well, we found that there were a number of instances where uh, cocaine was being trafficked by staff, that uh, staff were engaged in drinking activity with patrons, and that uh, exotic dancers were doing inappropriate things beyond what the rules allow for uh, licensed premises in B.C. The Liquor Control and Licensing Branch handed Monty's a $3,000 fine for an employee drinking on the job and another $1,000 fine for allowing a patron to remove liquor from behind the bar and walk out with it. 
Police say the bar has a lengthy history of liquor violations dating back to 2001. Firefighters who responded to a brush fire may have uncovered a copper wire theft in Sandwich today. A pile of wire is all that's left after firefighters rushed to Cuthbert Holmes Park this morning. Somebody called 911 reporting thick smoke and flames coming from a heavily bushed area. And when the crews got there, they were able to locate the fire and put the flames out quickly. Firefighters say the fire was started by someone trying to burn insulation off a bunch of copper wire. There was smoke and flame in the park. What we found was that uh, uh, someone's been organizing copper wire, uh, burning the insulation off, and that's what was actually burning, so we were able to extinguish it. It's unfortunate that, uh, that this area of the park gets uh, used for that. It puts the park at risk, and it, it, it does tie up this resource, too. Firefighters were able to douse the flames within a couple of minutes. Well, there's a new way to report crime in the capital region, and it is just a couple of mouse clicks away. Vic PD is adding a new feature to its website where you can report crime in your neighborhood, and an officer will come and follow up. All you have to do is fill out an online police report, check a couple of boxes, and fill out some contact information. Police say you can only report minor offenses, such as theft under $5,000, property damage, or fraud. The list also includes driving offenses and graffiti tagging. So I think uh, for the public, they are our eyes and our ears. So for them to be able to do it so easily to report a crime, especially the graffiti one, it, it will increase awareness of the actual crime and it's going to help me uh, see the amplitude of the issue and the problem around the city of Victoria and Esquimalt. Police say an online report can take up to three business days to process. An elderly man on a scooter has been killed crossing the street in Nanaimo. The accident happened this afternoon near the intersection of Old Victoria Road and Bowlesby Road. Police say the 78-year-old man was driving his motorized scooter northbound on Old Victoria Road when he was trying to cross to the other side. He was hit by a southbound vehicle with a 19-year-old woman behind the wheel. Witness accounts and from talking to the driver, it sounds as though the male on the scooter cut across the road in front of the Cavalier and the Cavalier was unable to stop. RCMP say the man was not in a crosswalk nor at an intersection when he was trying to cross. He was rushed to the hospital but died soon after. The driver of the car wasn't injured. The scene's expected to be closed for several hours as police continue to investigate. Well, if you're in the market for a new home or you're looking for a way to uh, make a little extra dough on the side, you might be interested in a new garden suite. The Capital Regional District wants to pique your interest with it. It's set up a garden suite display in Centennial Square so you can come and have a look. A company called Small Modern Living has designed these homes so they can be a freestanding structure or located behind your home on your property. The houses are energy efficient, self-contained second dwelling units, which vary in size and price. The one in Centennial Square outfitted with appliances and even a Murphy bed will set you back about $80,000. We're catering to a very wide range. Um, we're thinking of um, young couples um, finding this is the most affordable avenue for them. Uh, affordability is a real factor for young couples. Uh, trying to get into the entry-level housing. It could also uh, be used for student housing. Uh, it could be a rental, a mortgage helper. It could be uh, for aging in place. Applications for a garden suite in Victoria are considered on a site-by-site -site basis, provided that your property has the appropriate land size and the required zoning. It then must be passed by council. If you'd like to check out the garden suite, uh, daily tours run from 10 to 5 in Centennial Square in Victoria until Saturday. The province has come up with a plan to find welfare recipients a job. It is a new welfare-to-work program. The province says it wants to send people to northern B.C. to fill much-needed positions in the oil and gas industry. And the province says if you work up north, you'll earn a big paycheck. Well, I think it, it sort of depends, obviously. Once that work's done, we'll be able to have a better sense of the kind of jobs that they could qualify for. They're typically high-paying jobs. Anytime you work up in the north, uh, northeast or northwest, uh, those tend to be even labour jobs are very high-paying. So uh, we think that there's a real opportunity there, but we still have some more work to do. The province says training will be provided. NDP leader Adrian Dix says the government's cuts to skills training over the years has left a gap between skills and jobs, creating what he calls the jobs without people problem. The Crime Stoppers program in Nanaimo is making inroads in local schools as it paves the way for students to help prevent crime in and out of class. 
Today the program paid a visit to Dover Bay Secondary School to talk to the kids about how they can take a greater role in protecting themselves, their school and their community. RCMP officers explained how teens can report crimes anonymously over the phone, online and by text message. There's a number of unreported crimes in the schools, and kids are fed up with it. iPods get stolen, lockers get broken into, they see tagging on the weekends. And in their community, it may not only fall in their school, but maybe they see a robbery at a local store, or they see somebody getting beat up. This is something they can do about it. We're going to have very high-glossy posters, electronic billboards where we're posting what crimes are happening, and then they've got the information, they've got the tools now on how they can report that crime. Students say the program is a welcome addition to their school, that will make them feel more secure and more involved in their community's safety. It's very important because we want our students able to have a voice. So we want them to be able to know that they're in a safe environment when they're at school and that during school hours that they're able to just focus on academics and their kind of own social life at school. Within their own social networks, right, kids are going to be called rats if they find out that they're telling the police that this kind of stuff. And when they are announced anonymously, they can be truthful what they want to say and be honest. Dover Bay is the first school to implement the Crime Stoppers program, but it's going to be rolled out in schools across the Nanaimo Ladysmith District. Habitat for Humanity is getting a $100,000 donation, which will be used to help fund two new homes for families in Nanaimo. The money is coming from Gordon Food Service, one of North America's largest family-owned food service distributors, and Albion Fisheries, a BC-based company that's part of the GFS family. Employees at both companies hosted fundraisers to help support the Habitat donation. Habitat for Humanity will use the money to break ground on a new project in Nanaimo in the coming months. What it means for us is we'll be able to build two houses in 2012, probably a duplex. We're just finalizing some details. Um, we haven't got the location um, details uh, ready to be announced yet, but in a few weeks we will. And we'll build uh, two homes for struggling low-income families that wouldn't have a chance otherwise to own their own home. So exciting news for two families in the future and great news for Habitat for sure. The families that will help to build and eventually own the homes have not yet been chosen. Habitat says the money will provide a large part of the funding that's needed for the overall build. Really critical, more than you can imagine. You know, the cost of land and the cost of building, it's about a half a million dollar project. So we're still looking for a little bit more support within the community and with volunteers. So if anybody is interested in helping out, give us a call for sure. We are going ahead with this project. It will complete in 2012 and we're really excited to be doing this. GFS will make the $100,000 donations to seven other Habitat communities across the country. Calgary's been chosen as well. The others have yet to be announced. When you finally had your dinner and you may be craving a big piece of pie for dessert right now, uh, you're not alone. This is International Pie Day. Not everybody is uh, digging into a fresh baked pie to celebrate. Some are sharpening up their math skills and we're not just talking about PIE. March 14th signifies the digits of the mathematical number pi, 3.1415, uh, etc., the ratio of a circle circumference to its diameter. Math students at VIU celebrated both the number and the dessert today by pieing their professors. It's also a neat number. It's an irrational number, which means that it's, um, the decimal places go on and on forever and they never repeat. Well, Pi Day is a celebration of one of the all-time wonderful mathematical constants, Pi, which is the area of the unit circle and the ratio of the circumference to the diameter of a circle. Are, are you enjoying it? <sighs> Do I look like I'm enjoying it? Of course I'm enjoying it. <laughs> How could you not enjoy a pie in the face on pie day? Uh, a physicist in San Francisco started pie day celebrations in 1987, and since then the phenomenon has spread around the world.